The Eternal Dead. This is part 17. Unmasking of the Sons of God. I recently brought out a video with just the music, words, and graphics that touched upon the single the unmasking of the sons of God. We were sons of God, but because of coming through the flesh, through the loins of Adam, that son of Godship, the sonship, was masked over by sons of men, of who we are. In a temporal world, call from God, which heavily outweighs the discovery of the mind of Christ in our human spirit, quickened by the Holy Spirit, and God being our Father. So this unmasking of the sons of God, there's a Hebrew word called hypocrite. It meant the wearers of the mask. Actors on the stage of life pretend to be something they are not. Now what Jesus Christ accomplished, what was considered a mystery, hid since the foundation of the world. And the world's idea of a foundation that eternal foundation is the stage which I'm addressing right here. It's upon that eternal stage in that kingdom of the continuance that all this played out and is manifested in time. So in that light, the stage is set for the revealing of the sons of God. Now we know from Romans 8, 19, for their earnest expectation of the creature of the creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. They've been waiting for, for well over 6,000 years for the manifestation of the sons of God. And they briefly saw it when the Son of God, coming in the middle of a son of man, manifested his sonship to that of a body like us. Unfallen, virgin born, the second Adam. Now, without the removing of our mask of flesh, this will never occur. Our flesh, represented by our fallen minds, using what could have been a good thing, any particular race, culture, secular religious creed, or opinion of gender, male, male or female, are using this thing of the flesh, independent from the input from our human spirit with the mind of Christ, it becomes no good. Something Apostle Paul came to understand when he said, In me that is in my flesh, there dwells no good thing. Hidden under this mask of flesh is our human spirit, waiting to be wakened by the Holy Spirit in what Scripture calls the mind of Christ, the mind of our spirit, whose Father is God. Whereas the carnal mind is only his natural father, the two end up in a wrestling match. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh lusts or wrestles against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so they cannot do the things that you should. We see this in Genesis story of Cain and Abel. The Apostle Paul in the following text is referring to this. Genesis scene. Galatians chapter 4, verse 29. For as then, in the garden, for as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so, it is now. It's still going on. Cain would not embrace what his mother, his father, and his brother Abel have embraced, represented by the symbol of the slain, slain lamb of God and his shed blood, representing but will come thousands of years later in human history, the manifestation of an eternal fact of the Lamb of God, offering his life before the foundations of the world, brought out in Revelation 13, 8. Now we see it today. Coming from those who are unaware of this matter of the mind of Christ and their human spirit, second and religious individuals. We've got a whole series of videos on about the mind of Christ, what it, what it really means. Not some religious idea. Going on, we see that this matter gets even deeper. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Spiritual weakness in high places. 
This matter runs deeper than most think. Yet once the human spirit is awakened, we do wrestle against the natural mind ways of thinking, yet not realizing where this thinking originated. We hear Jesus express this deeper perspective to the carnal mind religious minds of his dead. In John chapter 8, verse 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, because that from the beginning, and bowed not in the truth, the reality, true reality, that that we have that state, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of the father of lies. The father of lies which we, and then I hold down this truth with the mind of Lucifer and our fallen flesh, called self not knowing of the mind of Christ in our human spirit. The self-mind overrules, blocks this mind of Christ in our human spirit. We hear the Apostle Paul expressing this in Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed for him against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now other translations express this text to say, suppress Hold down the truth. The disruption of the expression of what the fleshly form mind is and Lucifer, its father, keeps us away from God, who God is, and who we are, were to be, eternal sons, eternally begotten to God's first eternally begotten son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Once again, you hear the Apostle Paul revealing this even deeper using the expression inner being. Romans 12, 1 through 2. I therefore beg of you, please, brethren, through the instrumentality of the aforementioned mercies of God, by a once for all presentation to preach your bodies at the disposal of God, a sacrifice, a living one, a holy one, well pleasing, your rational sacred service, rational in that this service is performed by the exercise of the mind, the free will of the fallen human soul and stop assuming an outward expression that does not come from within you and is not representative of what you are in your inner being. You are. But it's patterned after this age, sons of men, daughters of men. But change your outward expression to the one that comes from within and is representative of your inner being. The mind of Christ in your human spirit, waking by the Holy Spirit. By the renewing of your mind, surrender of this mind, carnal mind, resulting in you putting to the test what is the will of God, the good, well-pleasing, complete will, and found that it meets specific specifications, place your approval upon it, complete will of God, locked up in you to be worked out by the Holy Spirit. You're not putting something in there. You're working out what's there and you're getting rid, get rid of what's in your fallen corner of mind. I keep he hearing me say that. It. It's called the weaning. Holy Spirit wants to wean you from your race, your culture, your second religious creeds, and your opinion of gender, male and female, that block who you truly are holding on to this life. He who seeks to save this life will lose who you really are. And you're quick as the human spirit by the Holy Spirit, waking to the fact that God has done His work. It's not your work. It's based in His finished work. Now, if you reject that, you lose it. So don't go off saying, I'm saying everybody's saved. You could be. But if you reject the finished work of Christ, you lose it. For I am saying to the grace which is given to me to everyone who is among you, not to be thinking more highly of himself above that which the necessity in the nature of the case imposes upon him to be thinking, but to be thinking with a view to a sensible appraisal of himself to the mind of Christ, according as each one God divided a measure of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not talk about brownie points. Prestige and recognition of the flesh. 
For even as in, as in one body we have many members, do not have the same function, thus we, the many, are one body in Christ, and members severely one of another. Now in my series, The First Begotten, The New Creation, and those series, they overlap one another. You're already in Christ. Like I said, we're in Christ. Christ is in the bosom of the Father. And we're eternally begotten sons of God through Christ, who was the first begotten Son of God, to whom all the sons of God would be manifested. They see that as heresy. It's not. It's the truth. You reject that, where are you going to go with your ideas according to your particular denomination? Your religious views and perspective? Think about it. So in this you see the mind of Christ is being expressed as the inner being. The carnal mind gets expressed as our conforming to the patterns of our particular race or age or time period. And this matter of the mind needing renewal reveals the needed cleansing of our minds, conscious and subconscious, brought up my series, The Weaning, and the other series, Heart and Subconscious Mind. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful. He's done His work. We can be unfaithful, but He has to remain faithful. He promised by an oath and promised and that He could swear within the heart He swore by His own name. So if there's any lack of on our part, God is faithful, by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The fellowship of the mystery, Christ in you. We see in this what was meant by having the same mind of Christ. The Son of God in the middle of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ our Lord. Only in this do we find true fellowship. Something the secular or self-willed religious mind will never experience. You see the bickering fighting that goes on. This gets linked to the mystery of Christ in you. With all having this mind, a potential, if you wake it up, aware or unaware, there is what's called the fellowship of the mystery, the mind of Christ in you. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. They go with a carnal mind, self will religious mind, or the secular mind. For what fellowship hath unrighteousness with right, uh, righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Light of the eternal of that. Second Thessalonians two ten. And with all these evilness of unrighteousness. And then that perish, because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. Remember what we just said about Jesus has said to the Pharisees, the self will religious people of his day, that they were of their father, that was a liar from the beginning. Then by in the truth. Spirit and truth. Spirit of the mind of Christ. That was locked up in them at that time, a mystery hid waiting to be revealed, and it was revealed after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the Apostle Paul was the one called to reveal it. It was always there. God's exit, God's way of escape, locked up in you. If you tap in that mind, you could escape. Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, you were spirit long before you became flesh. You were spirit long before you had a soul to express it and a body to which it would be expressed. He gets into, which you can't get into over here, gets in, it comes out my other videos. You were always eternally begotten. You had a mind and an eternal body, a sorry body. But coming through the loins of Adam, you end up in some bios body with a fallen mind cut off from the spirit to know this. Are you so foolish, having begun the spirit, or are you now brought, made perfect by the flesh through uh, secular ideas or self-will religious ideas? There's so much to this. 
fact of what God's accomplished through Christ and putting this in us. He's literally man coming as well. So it's potentially possible for all. Will all receive it? No. That's why I'm not a universalist or what they call an inclusionist that believes to some degree that everybody gets saved whether you're saved or not saved. No, you're always saved. You just say that. It's not about getting saved. It's a matter of coming to understand that you were saved to the finished work of Christ, the offering of the Son of God who will come in the middle of the Son of Man to take that fall that Adam had created. Everyone born to the loins of Adam was cut off from God. It took another son of God coming in the middle of a son of man, yet not fallen virgin born, to retrieve us all. Body, soul, to the quickening of the human spirit, the life-giving factor of our spirits. Awaken that spirit and cries, Abba, Father. I mean, I, I, I labor at this in these other videos, and you find few that can hear it. They hold to their present point of view, egocentric, not realizing there's something greater and deeper. So, this matter of the eternal day, people said, well, you sound like you keep repeating yourself. We have to. Because people just don't get it. You got it. It's in you but not in your phone corner mind. You stay with your phone corner mind, you're going to end up with some particular race, some culture, some secular religious ideas, or your opinion as a male or female, when there's something greater beyond all this. It's called a whole new creation. Something new to us. Beyond our races, our cultures, our secular religious creeds, and pins and male and female. And people say, well, I get tired of hearing you say that. It's the truth. You want to hold down that truth for some lie? You're going to see the byproduct of that. Hold down that truth for the lie. You're seeing it to death. It's called the mimic. It's the distortion of everything and anything God had ever accomplished. His original intent and purpose for our coming into this world. To be sons of God. Coming to a materially created world. Expressing our sonship to a living soul of intellect, emotions, and a free will to do that. Choice. You can either cut yourself off from God and let your soul act independent from God, sin. Let your soul act independent from God, sin. I repeat that. That's the moth eating idea of sin. Acting independent from God. You're commanded not lead unto your own understanding, but all your ways acknowledge him. He would direct your path. How would he do that? To your quicken, waken human spirit, that mind of that spirit, that knows his father. It never acts independent from his father once it's awakened. But it has to wrestle with this self that you've become. Submit yourself there from God, you resist the devil. The devil. The father lies, and you follow those lies. So, so much more. God bless you.